I'll start off with who I am. My name is Ryan. I'm here at PCS headquarters. We're based out of Boise, Idaho. Um, we're here because we were invited by the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, uh, specifically Teresa Lesage, who invited us on and we definitely wanted to take the opportunity to um, come and talk to you guys and explain a little bit about what PCS Adventures is all about. So, as you all know, I'm sure this week is Wisconsin out of school time, uh, or specifically out of school time nationally, Appreciation Week. And here at PCS, we definitely appreciate all that you guys do and in interacting with kids and providing content for them when they're not in the classroom. So you might be wondering who we are. We are PCS Adventures. Uh, PCS is <laughs> computer school. And so this originated as a guy working out of his garage in the 80s, teaching computer science to kids. And as you can imagine, in the 80s, computer science wasn't big in the classroom. Nope. He decided to make that a core part of what he did. And from that small environment of being in his garage teaching uh, computer science, it expanded to learning centers nationally. Uh, and then we branched into product development. And that's where we currently stand as we develop products and curriculum for during school and after school education. Um, a lot of it is based around hands-on learning. Um, obviously, as we've experienced in the last year, a lot of things have gone digital, but PCS is very much about hands-on. We've obviously integrated that with some things that are um, accessible for remote learning and such, uh, but we're still very much a hands-on company. Uh, we primarily provide products to K-12 classrooms, uh, summer schools, after school programs like you guys have yourselves, um, after schools, boys and girls clubs, YMCAs, the whole gambit. Uh, we make it very accessible. You don't have to be a highly specialized teacher in order to teach what we have. We try to make it very easy to understand and easy to implement within the classroom or within the after school space. In terms of the things that we offer, uh, we have everything as I described as a turnkey kit. So it contains all the materials that you need. It contains your instruction list. It contains all of the stuff that you need to do to set up. Um, we're big into drones. Uh, that's been something within the last couple of years that we've launched. Uh, we have our own proprietary drone that's buildable and that the students fly outside. And then we have uh, another drone that we use that uses a, a smartphone or a tablet to control. And that's gonna be a little bit more, you know, for inside learning and for the younger children. Uh, everything that we do is STEM and STEAM driven. So science, tech, engineering, math, and then for STEAM, you bring in the arts as well. Um, and another thing that we provide that really differentiates us from other people is the training and support that we provide. So we have a dedicated product trainer and he does a great job. He's able to go on site, he can do remote training, he can do whatever you need, he's very flexible. So that's just a gist kind of about what PCS does and what we offer. Um, specifically today, uh, we're going to be giving away a couple of different kits and so the first one, and I'll break these out in subsequent slides of what these things are, keep everything kind of surface level. I understand you don't want to hear me drone on and on about every little detail of the products, but uh, we have Brick Lab Steam Ventures. We're going to be giving away one of each of our collections, and I'll break down what those collections are here in just a bit. Um, and then with our Traveling Artist Kit, we've recently made that accessible for remote um, or distance learning. And so we're giving away three individual kits of that as well. And then we're going to be giving away a single of our Discover Mini Drones kits, which utilizes a kind of a handheld size drone. So the first one, if you saw, said Brick Lab Steam Ventures, you might be wondering, what is a Brick Lab? Not everyone knows what that means. So uh, that is one of our core products. So it's a Lego compatible building brick, it's our own proprietary brick. Uh, but we make it with nice rounded edges. And anybody who has kids who stepped on a Lego might you know, I appreciate having a slightly rounded edge will do. Um, there's a ton of different subjects that you can go into with a brick lab. I mean, far beyond anything that we provide, and we provide extensive curriculum options, but you can go into um, 
any possible engineering extension, English language arts, you name it. Um, but some of the things that we offer are like Brick Lab Magic Beans, which goes through uh, different fairy tales and brings in as kind of like a whimsical aspect to it. Uh, Brick Lab Zoo, which goes into animal adaptations. So the kids learn about the ways that animals adapt to their environment. And that's a really neat one, very popular. Uh, Brick Lab Beans Architecture, uh, which goes through different structures from around the world. Uh, so like the Taj Mahal and Mayan temples, things of that nature. Uh, and then Brick Lab Genetics. So going through understanding, you know, DNA, RNA, how that relates to the way that we exchange genetic information. Uh, they're, as I described, very versatile. Uh, we do have individually kitted options, and that's where something like Brick Labs Team Ventures comes in. And then they also include a mesh bag for sanitizing, uh, which is very helpful. You just throw mm -hmm. your bricks in a bag, put it in the dishwasher, off you go. It's very easy mm -hmm. to use and uh, no problems there. So specifically, uh, Brick Lab Steam Ventures, which is the first of the things that we're giving away, uh, it's a screen-free learning solution. So in the last year, as we've all learned, uh, kids spend a ton of time on the computer, and um, especially in a purely remote environment. Um, Music. So they, uh, they need stuff that's tangible. They want something that's hands-on. And so that's where we develop Brick Lab Steam Ventures. It allows you to go on, uh, distribute these uh, activity books. I'm not sure for those of you that can see my camera, we have these activity books here. And the students work through them. They can go through at their own pace. It's something that can be done in conjunction with their parents. It can also be done over remote learning, so done over uh, camera, or it can be done completely independently if they so choose. Um, it's all thematic. So there's three different themes, and that's what we're giving away is one of each of the themes. So the first one is flight. So they go through and learn about rockets and airplanes, hot air balloons. Uh, transportation, learning about different forms of ground transportation and how that relates to renewable energy and you know the future of ground transportation specifically is you know, electric vehicles are coming online more prominently now. And then the final one that's going to be released here in just a couple of weeks on the 1st of May is the food edition. And so that's where they go through and they learn about food production, where food comes from, uh, gardening at home, I'm personally very interested in gardening. I'm fortunate enough to have the space to do that. And uh, so these are really engaging and they don't require a screen to use. However, we did develop a website, as you can see here, which is build.adventures.com. And if you visit that, you can see all the different extensions that we go into. So in addition to the material that's in the activity books that they get, and each collection has four activity books, um, for either grades K to one or two to three. Um, beyond those activities within the books, they get the extensions that are free, freely available online. And they're, they're awesome, they're great to use. So this is just a little snippet of what it looks like um, inside of one of the books. Obviously, this is very simplified because each one of these is 40 pages. So to convey that in a slide is obviously somewhat difficult, but it goes through, you know, gives them key terms about what they're learning about. It goes through a brick build. So in this case, in the rocket edition, they build a rocket, and then they learn about the you know, history of rocketry and NASA and things of that nature, and specifically about the rockets over the gardening. They're going to learn about methods for gardening, um, what you would plant with what, you know, uh, complementary crops, things of that nature. And so they're all very engaging. The artwork is great. We have an in-house graphic designer who does great work. Uh, but that gives you kind of an idea of what Steam Ventures is in terms of content. And then in terms of the way that we offer it, um, so we have 10 student bundles. So that would include enough books for 10 students and enough bricks for 10 students. And then we can also do custom kits in which you tell us the number of students that you have, what subjects they might be interested in, and then we can just package that all together and throw in whatever books you might see fit. Um, each of the collections has its own um, educator guide, and we can provide either an educator or a parent guide. 
So if you felt that it was something that you wanted to have the students um, or the kids that you have work with their parents, and as opposed to working with you, we can provide a guide that's more suitable to parents as opposed to an educational environment. Um, and as I said before, there's flight, transportation, and food options. Did you have a question, Mary? So I did. Um, so the we've got the K one and then the two three. Mm -hmm. Are they similar builds, just with a little more detail, or are they completely different builds? They're going to be very similar. Uh, okay. It's going to be so it's written. Uh, in such a way that it's more appropriate for that grade, okay. to that level of reading comprehension. So that's, okay. that's where that comes from. And then the 10 individual, that, as goofy as this sounds, is that there's 10 mesh bags, 10 sets of Correct. everything? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank like you. I said, if you have some multiple that's not 10, we can just make that number. It's very customizable. We can go in, make it however you see fit. And then progressing from the Brick Lab, we our next product line would be our enrichment programs. And these are probably the most, uh, Brick Lab is pretty much good anywhere, but if you had one thing that you could say it was specifically for the after-school environment, enrichment programs definitely nail that. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about specifically the Traveling Artist Camp, but in general, all of these enrichment programs uh, contain materials and curriculum for up to 30 students. Uh, and they're all based on having 12 one hour lessons each. And so that is the curriculum structure. Um, if you can see my camera here, um, they all contain an educator guide, which is spiral bound. They're all very nice, has some nice artwork, just like everything we have. And then each day has its own setup. As you can see here, it has a complete breakdown of all the parts that you need. Um, or components within the kit, how long it's going to take to do each activity, primer questions. So there's a lot of hand holding. Um, as I've explained before, and most specifically with enrichment programs, there is no background experience needed in the subjects. So if you guys have um, people that are coming from, you know, like high school people that are um, doing after school volunteering or part time people that are coming in that don't have a background in, you know, rocketry or a background in the way that uh, the dynamics of the ocean or whatever it may be, whatever subject it may be, this thing or these uh, guides will walk you through that process. There's no need to have extensive background experience. Um, there's tons of resources available within them. And then as with the Brick Lab kits, we do have individually kitted options. Not all of them have the ability to be individually kitted because all of these are predicated on being together in an environment, but we do have some options there. Uh, this is just a little overview just to show the diversity of options that we have. So this would be science and superpowers to go through and learn about Wonder Woman and Aquaman and their different powers and how those interweave with different STEM concepts. Uh, pirate Camp, learning about um, aspects of the ocean and what pirates do. <laughs> and uh, Flight and Aerodynamics, which I showed you the, the guide for. They go through and learn about different aeronautic principles, uh, principles of flight, how planes work, lift, thrust, all of that. Um, build a better world is going through different engineering challenges in relation to the way that uh, mother nature presents problems so if there's a volcanic eruption how you might need to um, structure your city in a way that you're out of the path of that volcano or other different types of natural events and what you can do to kind of mitigate those uh, a very popular one we have is claymation uh, which if anyone has ever seen Wallace and Gromit or similar films, it's all stop animation. And so the students build their own figurines and they go through and uh, it's very entertaining and kids really get a kick out of it. Um, and Survivor Camp, that's going to be, as the name would imply, different skills that you need to survive out you know, in the great wild. And uh, that one's for grades six to eight. As you can see in the bottom right of each one of those, it will or in the bottom uh, 
in the upper right of Build a Better World, it shows you the different grade bands that they serve. So they're all going to be grades one to eight, and they're typically in three year grade bands. And so whatever you see fit, I'm sure we have something that covers it. We have 28 different enrichment programs. So I guarantee you there's something that we have that your kids will be interested in. So as I said, specifically the one that we're covering today is traveling artists. And so this one is where students are going as the name would imply, traveling around the world and looking at different forms of art. So as it says here, hands-on exploration of different forms of art and art history. So how these things developed. So here you can see an Aztec mask and then also um, some Greek pottery. And so each of these has little hands-on activities and we provide all the materials that they need and they go through each day and learn about a different form of art. And then they get to carry out that form of art with the materials that we provide. Um, and also as it says here, we do have this individually kitted and that's what we are giving away today. So this is something that can be sent home with students if need be. Um, and it's also individually kitted if the kids aren't allowed to interact with one another for whatever reason, if you guys have protocols that surround that, uh, we do have that. But we also make it, you know, it's a 30 student kit if the kids are allowed to come in and you know, carry on as they should. So here are different um, artistic forms that are covered within it. So you have the North American teepees here, you have the Alaskan totem poles, some Chinese dragons, um, got some. European art uh, prints, or the relief prints rather. And then um, got also the, Indian, I believe the Indonesian blanket. And so that's the, uh, where they go through and they uh, print onto a fabric. And it, it's very interesting and kids always get a kick out of it. And of course it's very culturally immersive. So rather than just going through and handing them a box of crayons. This is something where they're actually learning about how different art forms were created throughout history and the way that people carried them out. So these are little pictures from actually within the enrichment program. So the first one, as you can imagine, is the Matryoshka dolls, which are the Russian nesting dolls. And so they color their own and then they conceptually learn how they fold into one another or in the case of the actual Matryoshka dolls, they would nest within one another three-dimensionally. Um, there's wax resist. So learning about the way that you can do kind of a, a reverse print of something, go over the top of it, and then your print will be, you know, the mirror image of what you had done in wax. Um, the one in the bottom left is a sumigashi paper which is a Japanese form of art in which they use rice paper and then they marble it with ink and water. Um, the thing that I've interacted with that I thought was very interesting, and it's, it's not Sunagashi paper, conceptually very similar, is uh, with guitar bodies, you can actually do the same thing and you put um, marble paint on top of the water and then you draw the, the guitar body or whatever instrument or object you may have and then it forms a marble print all over it. And it's, it's very beautiful. Um, in this case, it's obviously Japanese centric and it's done on a rice paper medium. Uh, and then the final one in the corner there is Peruvian blanket weaving. And so they go through and they actually get their yarn and they make a little section of blanket for themselves. Uh, so that kind of explains what Traveling Artists is all about. Again, this is just one of our enrichment programs. We have 28 different ones. There's all sorts of subject matter. They're terribly interesting and kids always get a kick out of them. So shifting gears here, the final thing that we have to offer today is the uh, Discover Mini Drones package. And so these are programmable mini drones. Uh, they are handheld size. So this is them there. They are controlled by a tablet or a phone, a touchscreen phone. And they're very easy to use. They hover very consistently. Uh, they're durable. You, know, you can knock them around. The props pop off. You pop them right back on. Uh, they're incredibly uh, capable in terms of programming. I mean, you can do block coding. You can do line by line coding. You know, Python and Java and Node-RED and Swift and all these various languages. Uh, 
And we do have several different curriculum options with which they're compatible. So, in addition to the actual drone that's in the kit, we also provide access to two of our learning courses, which are Dronology and Dronology Junior, and with the junior name that obviously implies it's for the younger children. Uh, but both of these courses are online learning courses where they go through and they learn about drone basics. So they go through and they learn about what is a drone, how do you operate safely around a drone, what are regulatory concerns, um, and then how to be ethical in using a drone. Obviously, you don't want to pester people or harass people. And so using it towards a good end, even if you're just doing it for entertainment, making sure you're not irritating other people, especially your neighbors, if you have to live next to them. So these are four of the drone kits that we offer. And so the first two up top are going to be uh, enrichment programs. So those are going to follow that 12 one hour curriculum structure. Ready, sit, drone is going to be all about drone basics. What are drones? How do I use them? Why would I use them? What would I use them for? Um, that's probably our most popular of the mini drone kits. Uh, and then drone designers was a new one that we launched at the beginning of last year. And this one's really, really interesting. This is a, a melding of both coding and steam. So you're bringing in the arts element into coding and you actually uh, dress up the drone and then choreograph a routine. And the inspiration behind this is actually um, a woman here by the name of Erica. She was the one that wrote this enrichment program. She went through and found a video from Cirque de Soleil, which actually has brought on drones as part of their performance art. And they do it where um, they bring the drones on stage and in addition to the human performers. So it's kind of a, a melding of those two. And so she was like, wow, that's incredibly interesting. What if we took that concept and made it into something that we can teach the kids? And so the students go through, they decorate their own drone, they figure out what works and what doesn't. Obviously, there's certain realities that you have to come to when you're trying to put something on an object that's also trying to fly. Um, so there is a little bit of, you know, engineering and tinkering going on there in addition to uh, the artistic exploration, which is choreographing a routine and doing it through a means or by means of coding. So they go through, they draw out what their choreographed routine is going to look like. So they put that on the paper and then they learn how to translate that from a paper object or a paper drawing to a codable reality to actually make the drone carry out that flight pattern and make it appear as though you know it's dancing a routine. Um, as I said, incredibly interesting. Students always get a kick out of it. Um, if you were wanting something that's purely coding based, we have uh, coding with drones, which is the one in the bottom left there. And that it has a very wide grade band, as you can see, but that's because it starts at the most elementary block coding and then goes all the way up to Python which, you know, if you have 12th graders that are coming in that have no experience in coding, I can guarantee you they will be challenged by Python. Um, and you might have sixth grade students that are experts in it. So obviously this technology is still very new. And so it's something where you can bring in a student of any age and you can challenge them in some form with this. Um, the first of our drone packages and the one that utilizes our own Rubikube drone is Discover Drones. And that's the one in the bottom right here. And so that is a buildable drone where the students go through and they, they build the drone up. They learn how all the subcomponents come together. It's weaving in different STEM concepts as they go along. There's material science in there. There's electronics, there's uh, physics. There's all different things coming together. And then it culminates in their um, using the FPV or first person view function of the drones. And that's really actually put on goggles and they see in real time what the drone is seeing. And obviously that's inherently interesting. And that's kind of the carrot at the end of the course to keep the students interested and uh, really get them focused in. And a lot of teachers that have used this, teachers and after school administrators uh, that have at risk youth specifically, I've said this is something that really brings the kids in and really gets them focused. And the students that otherwise have a very difficult time of focusing really are drawn by this and it gets them to kind of buckle down and pay attention. 
So that's obviously a very powerful thing. Um, and a lot of out of school time is, you know, trying to keep the kids on track, get them engaged and get them thinking about what they want to do. So that's all I had. I'm sure you guys have heard enough of me talking. Um, so if you guys have any specific questions, definitely feel free to field them now. Um, you can put them in the chat. Um, I believe Jenica has been there, hopefully addressing any questions you might have in the chat, but you can also unmute yourself and feel free to let them fly over the airways as well. How doable are some of the kits that are designated like four six if it's guided by a grown up? Uh, what do you mean doable? Well, I mean, I our program is a is a four k through third grade program. Mm -hmm. but um, some of the things with drones and some of the kids are, you know, a, a little bit farther reaching. Um, so are any of the four to six kits accessible to students who aren't necessarily four to six, but would have some pretty good guidance with them? Yeah, I mean, there's always flexibility in those ranges. We do that based on the content that we're mm -hmm. presenting. So just like any kind of uh, specific classroom curriculum would say, this is where we believe that this is most applicable. Mm -hmm. uh, there is flex either way, you know, if you have very capable third grade students and you felt that they could do a drone program, you could have them do race at drone by all means. That's just the, the range of grades that we present it as that we feel it's most applicable to. For. And we, we write it in such a way, as I've said before, that it's made to be easy to use. We're, we're not trying to make it impenetrable to like, oh no, if you have a third grade, there's no possible way you could do this. No, it's, gotcha. it's, it's there. Uh, we just put those out as a suggestion because most people you know, don't want to just say, oh, I, I have no idea. You can try to figure out what this might be. Right. For, right. So. Thank now, you. See, we have second, I agree with Mary Ellen. We have second graders who do some coding. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just hoping maybe you'll come down a little bit lower because I think they would just, grab on this and be so excited to try to learn something like this um you know so it's like yeah it would be nice to have it even in a, a second and third grade level oh absolutely yeah we do have a one of our enrichment programs is called scratch camp so scratch is an interface that was developed by mit and so that's where they can go on and do that i'm sure you were talking about that in relation to the drones um, yes, and yes. And we use the scratch. We use the scratch for our coding. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just, you know, it would be neat if we could connect it because um, on a personal note, I have a grandson who has one and he's only seven and he enjoys his drone immensely, you know, so I could see even the younger ages learning the basics, the ethics as they get older. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and like I said, if you feel that you have students that are capable or kids that are capable of doing it, um, absolutely, they could, could bring that on. We just made it to the, the reading level, you know, is at the mm -hmm. fourth grade plus reading level. And so that might be a barrier perhaps for some students, maybe if they're very technically proficient, but they aren't necessarily up mm -hmm. there in terms of reading level. Um, but that can be easily bridged. You know, a lot of what you're doing with coding doesn't require extensive reading. Uh, it is very technical in nature. And so if they're up there in terms of their abilities, by all means, they can go in and code as they see fit. And so are most of the kits available like as a single set so you could get one and kind of try it out to see if it looks like it might be something that'll work or no? So we have adapted some of our enrichment programs so that you can go in and uh, you know, use them in a remote or a distance learning environment. Uh, and I can definitely provide a list to you guys of what those are. Okay. Uh, but not every kid has done that. Um, gotcha. You know, we, this all obviously took us <laughs> very <laughs> much by surprise. And everything, Indeed. That had, you know, everything <laughs> that we had, or most everything that we had is predicated on students being in the classroom or in mm -hmm. some kind of environment where they're all together. And so 
we've done what we can to adapt it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that we also understand that it's now shifting away from that and back to in class. So it's it's all kind of on shifting sands right now. Uh, but we do have uh, extensive resources available, specifically with uh, traveling artists. And I didn't get a chance to show this because it wouldn't convey necessarily very well through video chat. Uh, but there are online learning resources where they go through and there's slides available. And each slide that they hit actually has its own narrated portion. So it narrates whatever activity that it, there is that they're doing. Um, and it explains kind of the history or maybe the background of what activities are doing. It's funny, there was a game when I was young, I mean, like a hundred years ago called Masterpiece. And it was this super fun game where you learned about paintings from all over the world. And I almost wish they did that now with more of, and this was pretty much all about paintings, but just with all the different kinds of art that there are, it would be, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit when we were looking at the um, traveling artists that, you know, not only do you see the different, but you can also experience it too. That was pretty neat. Yeah, and that's what we're all about is hands-on experience. You know, students can go on the computer anytime um, and there's tons of learning that can be done through a computer medium, but mm -hmm. the hands-on stuff is the way that they really, really learn and that yeah. it really cements in. And, you know, we're not unique in seeing that, but we are unique in that we provide all the materials and the curriculum that we need to make that happen um, in one kind of neatly packaged item. So that's where PCS comes in. And we hope that you guys check out our stuff. Well, I ordered my catalog because I'm, you know, of the age that I want to see it in print. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I want to look at the catalog and not everything totally online. Yeah. And we do have the print brochures and catalogs and such. So we can definitely send those out to you guys. And we have a, a thing on our website, the last slide here. So our website is adventures.com, just like the last part of our name. And so... You go in, you can stop by, ask us any questions you may have. We can provide a quote to you if you see some items that particularly fancy. Um, as you can see on the bottom line there, those are our four product lines. Um, so tons Perfect. of different options for all different students. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any final questions from anyone or? No, thank you very much. I had not heard of your website before, so. I hadn't either. Have you been at, um, you probably have been at NEA or any of those oh, yeah, in the past? Yeah. So we okay. have done the full gambit of those, you know, Magnet Schools of America, Beyond School Hours, uh, National After School Association. Okay, clearly I was, I, I just walked by, sorry. <laughs> no, no, we're usually no, this one is... of the inline booths. So we <laughs> try to make ourselves more prominent. <laughs> Um, so gotcha. specifically at the uh, Boost Conference, which is held in Palm Springs each year, uh, that's more for West Coast educators, but we did like, you know, a full on <laughs> island booth. And we had tons of people despite going there for years say, I've never heard of you. And it's like, well, <laughs> we've been here the whole time. It's just that is interesting now. To spring for the, the Mondo booth. So Right, right. It is kind of all about who hits you up with um, themselves as you walk in the door, kind of. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's no problem. And definitely, like I said, feel free to reach out anytime. We're happy to address any questions you might have. And otherwise, I think we'll wrap things up here. I definitely will be looking at our website. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. All right. Well, thanks again to Wisconsin DPI for the opportunity to do this. And thanks you all for coming by. And I hope you have a great rest of your week.